the second side doesn't take as long as the first side because the pan's already hot. Hello and welcome to another Cooking with Gouda. A very highly refined and highly produced cooking show. <laughs> no. This is Tiny House Cooking Gouda style. So what we've got going on tonight, I don't know what this is called, but there's a lot of vegetables. Well, there's a lot of peppers. There's bell peppers. Anaheim peppers, can't remember the name of those, habaneros, serranos, jalapenos, so that's all the peppers. That runs the gambit. We've got sweet, we've got savory, and hot, right? Okay. Then we've got cilantro, garlic, and then uh, there's a chuck roast that I have to sear. This is all going down here. <laughs> on the floor in the crock pot ridiculous okay so that's me clowning people that can pan every goddamn thing they use right okay the deal is is right now i turned the the heater off to be able to make this audio for this video you should actually be watching me cook not watching me talk all right cooking time we're cooking with gouda shove more in there. I think it's probably a moisture content situation. Before I started all this, I washed all these peppers with a fruit and vegetable wash.
this is an Anaheim pepper. These are uh, what I would call a savory pepper. That's what this uh, recipe is all about. It's all about the difference in the peppers all coming together. You got the sweet, the hot, and the savory just all in there having a good time. This is Cooking in a Tiny House. Makuta, your host. This is all would be nice to be thrown in the biodigester. I don't want to mess around with getting rodents. So yeah, I take the seeds out of everything but the hot peppers. Because that's what makes the hot peppers hot. Why do you want the hot? Beautiful peppers though. Look at that thing. This is freaking Prineville, Oregon. That orange bell pepper was so meaty. I can't even believe it. I want to get everything. <clears throat> I don't know if I'm going to be able to get everything in there or not. Because I still have garlic, onions. The onion is going to take up about that much room. I have to run two batches, so I should just pour some off. That way I don't lose that liquid. Okay, my onion. Tiny house kitchen. Oh yeah. Phew. I am glad I have glasses on. I just got sprayed in the face with ginger juice. Slippery little bastard. I think that's a... So some people might think you want to do all this and then do it all in the blender. The thing is, is the blender needs to cool down. My tiny house cooking series. I'm very worried right now about the whole situation. It's uh, I'm, I'm drawing a lot of power now with my uh, my new system of um, having water on demand water. The heated the heated hoses are, are pretty much running all the time. Now it's like well this whole entire everything I got going on right now revolves on this generator because there's no way. I could possibly run this trailer without that generator. So that's kind of like scaring me. I'm like, ah, oh, man, you know, should I buy another generator and have a whole backup generator? You know, and that might be the, the thing I do, but I've been entertaining the idea of, um, basically putting an inverter in the truck so the truck would have the ability to run the trailer basically you just turn the truck on and leave the truck on and and you know if if it's an emergency you know the truck can just be turned on and left on to run and keep the the trailer from freezing up overnight right so that's a good thought um and also the way I use power, like I need to run power over here, I need to have power over there. And right now I just throw the generator in the back of the truck and, and take the generator over to wherever I need power. Well, I'm kind of planning on making the generator not really a permanent, but you know, 
making it so it's it's out of the weather all the time and in a good spot that's like one of my next projects so I'm just trying to decide exactly how I'm going to do it because again I'm not trying to waste a bunch of money on purpose stuff that I'm just going to use for this winter time purpose built stuff it's just you know I gotta I want to be able to reuse the stuff I don't want to just buy stuff to be buying stuff but I'm also kind of worried right now finances could get so bad that I literally might like I don't know if they'd take my truck away from me I bet they would uh, I mean uh, phew. I might actually have to go into like bankruptcy before this whole um, invention thing takes effect Unfortunately, I turned the business over to an employee that thought it was a thought we were in the business of having money in the bank. And well, no, we're not in the money in the bank having business. And if you don't have what the customers want in stock, they will go other places. And so we had a bunch of crap in stock. And Basically, the customers have said thank you, and the sales have dwindled down to pathetic. And then, of course, the money follows, because you don't get to have money in the bank and shitty sales. So I let her basically up for probably a little bit too long, but hopefully she has it in her head now. But I don't. First, you have the well-stocked shelves with high-quality stuff and tons of stuff in the warehouse, backed up, ready to, ready to go. Then you get to start saving money. You don't get to save money and have just a bunch of crap, like nothing on the shelves, like just, just ugly shit that nobody's ever going to want to buy. Like, what the concept did you I mean she worked for me for a long ass time I would have thought she would have not had such bad ideas about shit. especially when I was calling her going hey I can get some really good shit over here oh no we can't afford that meanwhile she's telling me we can't afford this when we had more money in the bank account than we had ever had before why well because I always spent the money on the products keeping the products in stock keeping a nice stock of of selection and variety and all this so she didn't do that she left the money sitting in the bank account and didn't do shit about keeping the shelves stocked with quality she just threw like some whoa some really really bad shit up and nobody really wanted it and the sales hit a record beyond all low record low beyond low like never have they been that low and that's just like hard to recoup from so yeah fun times we need lots of pencil and where are we going to put it you might be thinking that's a lot of salt but i'm probably not remembering there's going to be a giant chuck roast in there pink salt uh, this looks like and honestly this right here is the best damn chip dip just all by itself oh once it gets salt uh, yeah let's put the salt in there then let's mix it up on low chips oh wait but you know what a lot of people are eating these things nowadays they're delicious i eat them they're like chips but they're different they're chickpeas my cat loves them see look at the crunch on them but you know what they're a little dry so if i throw some of those in there like that i scoop them some of this and just put that right on there I don't know what this is called but it's 
it's gonna be delicious. Hot. It's so good. But it's a hiccup hot. Oh, oh man, it's good. It's super hot. Ah, it's good for me. It's good for you too. Ah. What, you're saying this is overkill? I generally wear this outside. And this knife works so nicely right here. And I was having a hard time. Like, where should I put it? You know, it's like, oh, it's a, it's a really cool knife. but So I put it there. So yes, I realize I do, I'm like not going to be attacked by a bear. But there's badgers outside. So, yeah. I love this. Like, I should make this and sell this. Somebody's probably going to think of that now. What's this? It's like pepper salsa. Now, I normally make smoothies in this thing. So, hopefully it doesn't taste like... Hopefully I don't have pepper flavored smoothie smell. That just has to set aside. And that's pretty much the pan that I do it all in right there. That's where the magic happens. I'm trying to pull this out a lot sooner. But I don't really have the uh, counter space for it. So this is a chuck roast. Very nice. We have nice meat here in Prineville, Oregon. We're gonna get this thing smoking hot. That whole batch of stuff there has to crank up the flavor on that there. So I'm gonna hit that with just some. Um, don't you even ju judge I'm using this salt is what I have right now. Some Mediterranean sea salt. I guess that's not that bad. I put all that pink salt in there, but it pretty much tastes perfect. So, I just salted that. So now I gotta salt the meat too. Put the pepper in this other one. I'm using the beef to uh, clean off the chicken from earlier. That's the way you do it. And tiny house cooking. That's what we're going for. We're going for those deep, complex flavors. And this video is brought to you by Bombay Sapphire Gin. When you have it in the freezer, just drink it. I wish I really had some chips though. I'd be nailing that stuff hard right now. You just get the get the flavor in the mouth. That's uh, about all I can do. I'm not a hard alcohol drinker. I think when you're doing a cooking show, you pretty much have to drink alcohol. Starting to see a lot of smoke. Probably telling us we're getting close. Want that nice hard sear on this thing. Woo wee! Perfect. Look at that beautiful caramelization. Oh yeah. Beautiful. You know it's perfect because right there and right there is too far. And right there is too far. Three little places that are too far says that everything else is just perfect. 
Those are some chipotle peppers. Those probably would have been badass. The second side doesn't take as long as the first side because the pan's already hot. So it's um, 18 hours later. So 18 hours, the chuck roast has been in the pot with all the peppers cooking away. And it's now lunchtime. The following day, it's time to taste it. Yes. That looks delicious. Now I just cut the generator off. It's been running all damn night and all morning and afternoon because it's been cloudy. And those hoses are really sucking the power. So the solar finally caught up and I was able to turn the generator off. But when you're crock pot cooking, Kind of nice to have that uh, power. Normally, this would be served with like Mexican style, uh, with all kinds of, you know, like some rice, maybe, maybe some tortillas and some other stuff. And I might have held back some of that original stuff I blended out of the peppers as like a garnish. Well, that. Is what normal people do in normal situations, but when you live in a tiny house off grid, that's a meal. Now I'll probably cook up like a sweet potato or something like that with it, you know, for another meal, or another, and I'll probably throw like an egg in it, throw it on an in an egg, you know, all kinds of stuff. But this first, this first one here, doesn't smell super spicy or anything. The meat, I guess, really toned down the spiciness of it. Has a little spice to it. Mmm. Delicious. It's pretty darn tender. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.